Hey, what's up, guys? Be here again. I feel like I haven't done a video in forever. Uh, but yesterday, uh, I did a tiny little one on one with Harlan the other day on just going over volume, just a little bit of price action stuff. And there's a bunch of examples I saw today. So today, I'm just going to go over just volume, just going to go over volume and volume divergence and how you can play off of it and all that good stuff and everything in between. Just kind of just going to go on a rant. So please bear with me. Is I, I really wish I recorded yesterday with, when I did the one on one with him because. What I, I really went full Bueller nerd mode, so I'm just gonna go over uh, ATVI and Apple from today, and then we'll come back to Square and go over all this jumble and crap. <clears throat> but I want to go over just pure volume right now. So today on ATVI, screw the pre market. We're just gonna go over uh, all this, just just this and this, okay? So I'm gonna clear this again because I can probably just do it all. All right, so let's look at this first candle. Right, looks pretty bullish. But it doesn't matter. These, this, the first 10 minutes, they don't matter. You don't trade the first 10 minutes, remember? So these two, they don't matter. You're paying attention from here on out. Now, after all the craziness and all the crazy traders are done, you have rising volume. So now, you know you have bullish continuation. You have price up, price up. <clears throat> now, a lot of the time, and this is what forms your flags, your bearish, your rect, not bearish rectangles, your, your just your rectangles, your squeezes, your triangles, all, all the good little squeezes that happen on continuation patterns, like your flags. See how you kind of have a flag here? It's a bull flag. But some people get shaken out on this candle. Why? Well, that's because it's a seller reaction candle, and this happens a lot. Now, you need to remember, this candle doesn't matter. It's a seller reaction. You just had a big push up past this, which this line is the top of that candle. Technically, you are bullish because you passed it up. If you would have stopped here, you would have been eh because you didn't, you know, you weren't 100% sure that the price was actually going to push up above that, but it did. It did push up above it just enough. You got that seller reaction. That's normal. This is people taking profits. This is people thinking it's going to turn around because it pushed up. This this happens. It happens on both sides. You'll you'll get it on the other side too. Now, the next one, you have this. You now you're back on this track again. You're back on your zeroed out. Now, this had rising volume to here. So now you have bullish continuation again. Stay in your position type thing, okay? Now, this candle normally doesn't matter if it's a seller reaction candle, but buyers had control. So you just have bullish continuation again. This doesn't mean they lost control. This just means they ran out of gas on this candle to this candle. They just need to reset again. They're just zeroing out again, so they're going back. It's in a wave. So then it goes back up. So now we're here. Went from here to here. So you just got the high. <clears throat> now, how do you know when it's going to stop? Well, if this matches, the if sellers match this volume or pass it up, you now have a higher chance of this being uh, reversed because you're out of resistance. So let's say, oh no, wait, I don't need that line there. So there's actually, let's see how close they were. They're actually the exact same amount of volume. So now you know you have a good resistance here. Now you want to look at the candle. How big is the candle? Well, it's pretty much a bullish and a bearish engulfing. Not all the way, but it's practically uh, it's a bearish candle. So now you're trying to take over this level. You're getting back to this level again. You want to see how are they getting back below this? Because this is where buyers took control. So now if it's going to go down, you want to see where sellers take control. So now you got this buyer reaction candle, just like we talked about. The very opposite of this candle, very opposite of this candle. It's just a reaction candle. They happen. That's where you get your flags, your rectangles, your other ones. And look at that. Not a flag, but it's it's a good little continuation pattern. So it drops there. You're looking back to your volume. Did this seller volume pass this up to show you that sellers still have control after the slight reversal? Yes, they do. Bigger candle. You got way more volume. You got way more volume there. Now, back to this candle. You remember how I just said you have a buyer reaction? You have another one because you just had them take a battle. They just won that battle. They need to take a break. So now this candle doesn't even matter. That's where your flags and rectangles form. Now you have bearish continuation on slow volume, and it rises. Nothing but red candles all the way down. And you're going to lose steam sometimes, so don't don't get chicken out because it does, this, it does that. That's just how it is. You're going to lose some momentum sometimes. You're just running out of fuel. It's okay. Now, seeing this, that would have been a good exit point on puts because that, and remember, this is me talking about a call scenario, then I talked about a put scenario, how you could see price form as it's doing it live. So now let's head over to Apple because that was a lot of examples in just one. So let's go over to Apple. All 
All right, I can't delete these lines or I'll forget to put them back. But see today, so I move that. So price was sticking here, right? Just going left to right. It's kind of a pain in the ass to play. And your pre-market level is right here. So let's just mark that. So now you know. To take complete seller control, sellers need to have momentum leaving this range, right? Which it did. As it exits that line from this candle to this one, you had rising volume, and then you had the seller reaction for continuation. That's normal. And you had the buyer reaction. They're just chilling. The sellers took control again. Over. It's higher than that candle. I know I'm marking a lot of lines, but I'm trying to give a good example as I'm going through it. <clears throat> Let's check this out. So you had a lot of sellers here. Down. Down. That matches. Buyers took it up a little, but they never passed this one. So they never, buyers never retook control. So you know this is possibly just going to be a lower high. And that's exactly what it was. That's all that was right there. Rising volume, mainly sellers. That's a good thing to see. With that slight price divergence, because you mainly have sellers here. But that's okay. Not really. Which I'll go over that on a square here in a second. I'm just trying to run through this and see if I can see any other, any other ordeals that I can talk about. That's pretty much all the nerdiness I went out on just pure volume to price. That's pretty much all I watch while I play, and I've been showing other people that, and it's really been helping other people. Uh, Treacher and Trevor's like six out of six now. Harlan was back testing it a lot. He's having a lot more success in trading now. So now, what the bigger part of my nerd rant was last night <clears throat> was this. I went over square with Harlan, and all I went over was the volume with him on this, and then we started talking about price divergence. I wanted to give him a good example. So I was going through a bunch of charts, and I found square. I didn't really like the actual chart, so I decided to make my own. So I just left this up. But what I drew here, and I can honestly redraw this. I don't want to, but I will. <clears throat> so let's say... So this is your volume. This is your price, okay? So let's say your volume... is making higher highs, right? <clears throat> and your price, I don't know why I drew that box, by the way, just ignore that. And then your price is making lower highs. So clearly, they're not matching. There's a divergence. One's going up, the volume's going up, the price is going down. A lot of the time, you're gonna get those types of candles during that no, that's why I was going over this with Harland. And I went over that on the other two examples as well. Is you'll look for these candles that don't matter. People get lost in those candles. As soon as they get to that volume, they're like, what am I doing? Why am I losing this trade? Well, it's because you're just running from the plan now. You don't even, you, you didn't even, now you're just freaking out just because you see one thing go against you. So just calm down and remember, look at your volume. You're on the five minute. You're not on the one minute. We're not watching a choppy a choppy chart we're watching a good chart so if this was never broken by buyers on this candle then you knew that the the divergence was good it just kept going up this was going down there's a price squeeze there so you have a price squeeze because you have this going up this going down there's a squeeze because divergence is literally like looking at like a like a flag when you look at a flag you know that there's a chance it's going to pop up like if it's a bull flag you know that there's a chance that it's going to pop up so you're looking to play calls right well, here it's 50-50. You don't know yet. It doesn't even matter what trend it's in. Sometimes it could just literally poop out of the bottom and give you a good enough drop to, or, or push up to give you a good play on options to make money. Just a good percentage play. So th every time you see that, just remember, it's a squeeze. Whenever you see me type it in chat or you see volume doing this or it's just dropping, that's a squeeze. Those squeezes are things you need to mark. You need to see where price. So let's see how it was compared to this chart. Let's clear this. I didn't cover that as well as I did yesterday, but I, c I did cover a lot of it during the ATVI a and Apple analysis in the beginning of this. So let's check out this, just because I saw that it was dropping right there. So it's covering these. So that's not divergent. That's confirmed. But that's a squeeze in uh, volume uh, nonetheless, though. So you know that you have a good squeeze there. 
Now, what you're looking for is a past resi a past support to see if it gets passed up. This would be the support you look for. Not anything over here. This one, because this is where it stopped, stopped, pushed up. This is where the buyers took control. Then you had a squeeze in price. Three is the rule that I always tell people. If you see any more than three, you normally should just get out of the trade because it's not. It's normally not going to go your way. You see, like right here this is a good example, actually. There's a resistance here, as you can tell from here, 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 and here, and here, and here. Buyers took control right here. Then you had rising seller volume as the price was dropping, and it kept going. Then you had that fake out candle. Then you had rising seller volume again, making you think sellers had control. But it never passed this support. So technically, bulls and the overall picture still have control of this and this little wave. Now you're looking for this wave to be broken. That's when it did all this. Rising volume. This is over than that. That's good. This never passed that. So that doesn't even matter, which don't don't get me wrong, it matters. The price and all that still matters, but it doesn't matter in your play because it didn't pass this up. It didn't ever recorrect your overall picture of the trend, all that good stuff. Then you had rising volume, broke that trend. Now you're in this wave, right? Now you're in this wave. This is where price stopped. Went down, went up. Oops, sorry. <clears throat> went up. Yeah, that seller reaction, that's okay. Then you had rising again, rose again. Did not break. Um, now it did break. Buyers never took it uh, over control again. You see, you just have this weird battle in volume now. No one really ever gave you good indication. When you have that choppiness, get out of the trade. So technically, you could have played calls in all of that. Now, it would have been kind of annoying because your theta and IV would have caught up to you on the same week expiration or even same day expiration that would have been even worse but on a next week expiration or even farther that would have been okay but again we're not going over that we're going over how to look at volume in a better way because <clears throat> volume is very very important this will help you so this these indicators that you guys use all the indicators you guys use they're lagging they will lag behind and you won't get confirmation as instant as someone who's looking at just volume and price action. And then that's when level two breaks out. You know, you can start using the bid to start playing these said volumes and said moves. So that's just a really good example. And I, I wanted to have a good volume video. This will only be for premium and lifetime guys. So please don't share this link. This is only for you guys. Just wanted to have a good breakdown on volume. I'll have more videos come out as well. Um, on this, I just wanted to give a, get a good first one out for you guys. Which, that's kind of divergence, but you had rising seller volume, so that's okay. I'll see that BA chart. I know there was one here. Look at that. Buyers took control. Then you had a little gas. They had to take a break, smoke break, I guess is what you can call it. And you had rising volume again. And it passed that one. Rising volume. So let's just mark those candles. So it went up to here. Then you had your little smoke break candle then you had the rising volume again so technically off of just this catching support here because you have one two three catching support let's see you were just waiting you're wanting you're wanting a good play so you, you this is be too early now this would have been the good entry it broke trend again because it made a higher high than the trend it didn't make a lower high Lower high, lower high, lower high, broke the lower high. That's a reverse in trend. Now you're looking at volume. What did it do in volume? Bam, passed up. As soon as it passed this level, and as soon as you saw you had rising volume, which was probably about right here, you probably could have gotten about anywhere in here before uh, this candle closed. So you're in. Then you have another one. Then you have that smoke break candle. Then you have rising volume. Major pop. Sell into the momentum. Sell before this candle is done. You have plenty of, this is plenty of room for a good 20, or more percent play alone. Oh wait, my bad, sorry, we're on BA. So if, let's say entry was right here, 177.30s. Even if you sold it to momentum up here before the top, which is what I always try to tell you guys, 179.65, you just made a good freaking pop, man. You just you just made a very good options uh, scalping play. No red candles either. But these wicks, they really screw people. Like on Apple, let's go over that. There's one last thing. Oh wait, I can't clear that chart. So let's see. So you see these wicks? There's another thing you could check out. On the last hour candle of pre-market, this is the last tip I'm going to throw in this video. This is something I do not like to share because this is some shit that can make you a lot of money. 
So you see this wick, and you'll, you'll see it on bigger tickers more than smaller ones. You always want to, at the very end of the market, just turn on the hour real quick, turn on the hourly, and go check out the last candle of pre-market, the very last candle. What happened in this? And by the way, these are halved because technically the market starts at 8.30, so 30 minutes of this is on the gray, 30 minutes of this is on the black. So that's why it's, it looks like that. It'll look like that on your chart too. But this wick is one of two things. An idiot who accidentally fat-fingered his order, or it's a bank-slash-bigger investor telling everyone, screw off, buyers have control of this. When you have candles to the bottom side going past supports that strong, because technically the candle body never passed that support, it never passed yesterday's open, it never even passed yesterday's low. So that's pretty much a seller... I mean a buyer saying you're not taking it any lower than this level. You're not going to have it today. Then we opened super bullish. We went up. Happened here again. Wicks. Never passed pre-market levels. Never passed those levels. Never passed intraday levels. Popped. Let's see right here. There's, there was another good example. But remember, let's, let's say it's your, this is your candle. I know that's ugly as hell. If your wick is higher to the top at a resistance, I promise you the higher probability is that the next candle is going to take you down, and then you're going to have seller volume take you down. If you have a wick to the bottom side like I just showed you, there's a higher chance, a higher probability with rising volume that you are going up. So just remember that, the little wick strategy, and then the hourly, uh, the last candle. You always want to check the last candle, because sometimes it'll indicate to you if it's super bullish or not. See the wick's higher on the bottom, or, or reaches more? Think of these as arms. This one's reaching down farther. And actually, I drew this before this was even here. So the fact that it did that should have shown me that day that it was going to pop. But pre checking that pre-market candle really does help you with the bias before the before the end of the day. And don't worry about these other drawings. This is just the Apple analysis I was giving to the lifetime guys for the Apple swing. Because this is a speculation play. I keep seeing these falling channels into continuation bullish. And uh, all that good stuff. But, uh... If this video helped you guys with uh, reading volume or how to apply this to volume and how to trade or apply this to any of your trades, please let me know. It does help me help you, I guess is how I'm saying that. Um, I'll definitely release some more videos, even if it's just repeating the same info, because I really do want people to start using volume more. Uh, I've been preaching this all along. I'm just glad that the strategy started to pick up speed a little more for everyone, because this strategy is very helpful. Even if you guys don't use this for the rest of your trading, you can at least build off of this strategy. But uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Please uh, hit me up with some feedback in the premium chat or whatever, uh, but thank you. Okay, so I came back. I'm sorry I just said bye, uh, but I found a better example of volume divergence to show weak trends. So this is really cool, actually. So I had to go to the 30 minute, and sometimes you have to change uh, time frames and all that because the 30 minutes is just stronger. The 5 minutes easier to see because you have more information in these than a 5 minute candle. But here, I'll redraw it. Let me clear this. So let's just draw the high and the low. And then we will do the trend line. So screw these. You had rising seller volume. And actually, you actually had these matched on volume for the most part. So you know they had control. But you definitely had rising volume on these two. So the cool thing, though, is you could pick out this weak trend. See how we went up right here? Technically, volume's been dropping this entire time. So now, you're waiting for a volume breakout. You're waiting for one of them to pop up. It looks like it's going to be a lower high. It'll probably drop low because it's at a resistance. Because if you look here... There's a resistance right here. You have that information, the low of about a couple, a few days ago. This almost reached. This did touch, like, you know, it was there. This touched. So you know that that's a strong resistance at 184.87. But you have volume to price divergence. Price is rising as volume is dying. So now you're waiting for that pop. I think it's going to go down, personally, but... Personally, at a resistance, is I like to play aggressive. So since this is at a resistance... And also, another note, actually, this is a lower high. 
it never came back up and forced anything. It's it came back up and it stayed under this. So that's a lower high. So that now you're now you're like eighty percent confident that this is going down since volume is diverging so hard. Because price is rising, but that's the weakest push I've ever seen. So most likely you're gonna get a drop here pretty soon. That's when I turn on level two. What I want to see broken is this for that wick. Almost touches that, pushes up there. You had rising volume there. Technically, you can't see it. It's pretty horrible to see. But again, it's weak volume. Oh, almost just kicked my drink off my thing. So I just wanted to throw this in on the end of the video. This will be about a 20-minute video almost. But uh, I kind of wanted to see what this did. I personally think you're going to see price drop uh, soon. And this candle just started. So you might get it on this one, actually. So now what I'd be looking for is for this candle or this volume candle to pass this one. If it passes this one, if it passes 60,000, then you know sellers have control. If it passes this with buyers, you know buyers are trying to take it to create a double top at the pre-market or at the open high. But I personally think this is going to be a lower high. Referring to McDonald's with the overall market, it probably wouldn't be best to watch these because it doesn't need the rest of the market to move. But just a good little tip I wanted to throw in the end of the video. I thought I'd throw a real example in for volume divergence to price di volume to price divergence. Oh, and referring to level two, I was just looking at this because you would want to see the price get flushed under 184.16. So if you saw 180, the price, this ever fly under 184, sellers definitely have control. There's just another good little tip there. But uh, I'm just going to throw this in the video. I'm not even going to do an outro.